we need not lose our identity completely. What a shame it would be, and what a folly, to add to our load the bitter quarrels with which the extreme socialists are eager to convulse and exploit these critical years. So just all over the place now. I work in a bank and we have to put up with them all in there, changing all their money and that. Which I know very well, so I've lived in London most of my grown-up life. I wish they'd get out of my f way. I think he just continues to incite hatred and prejudice, and I think he should apologise. <laughs> this is a journey into a lunatic asylum. And this month we have seen Europe, the UK, painting the doors of asylum seekers red, putting wristbands on them, and the worst of all, Denmark, mm. suggesting that they're going to take their few precious bits that they managed to smuggle out. Remember the lessons. Remember how the Nazis took out gold teeth. Uh, in a way, viciously. The excuse was that Manchester was developing a ghetto. Ghettos, as had been seen from the American experience, were bad things because out of ghettos came riots and so on, and they were determined not to let it happen here. So that it now became necessary during the late 60s to find a way of containing this very threatening presence. And the way that was found was the destruction of the, of the black community. All along here, there used to be black people's houses, Carter Street and Mountain Street and so on. I mean, I was born around here, and it gets you very angry that you face it and say, well, uh, you've got to go wherever they've got places for you. This is before they even consider anything else. It's not an ideal community, but it is a community where people know one another, and you don't want to move out. We've got a lot of old people, we've got a lot of black people in the area that feel very, very strongly about it. We as a community fought a long campaign to persuade the city council to refurbish these houses, to bring them up to an acceptable living standard. What happened was that they chose to bulldoze the, the lot. The damage is done. They do have to get out and play or else they'd be shutting doors all the time. It's obvious they haven't got a garden here but they do cater from with the playrooms. There's not one to every floor, but you can share it through the fire escape, which is quite good. If they can get down to them, they keep locking the doors now and again. However, there are two duchies which function as trusts and own a great deal. They are the duchies of Lancaster, which is held by the reigning monarch, owns around 46,000 acres, including Lancaster Castle, and is worth 534 million pounds. And the Royal Duchy of Cornwall, which is held by the heir to the throne, owns 135,000 acres and is worth 909 million pounds. These two duchies make up a large chunk of the royal family's spending money. Dukedom no longer comes with the right to tax the peasants. If you're bothered, come round to the Marsh Drive and actually speak to the residents or go to speak to people in Grand Park, you would understand what they know. You cannot turn around and say to me, How are you, sister? How are you? Having been elected locally for 18 years, I certainly have been around Marsh Drive and Graham Park Estate more, more than you have. More than you have. I remember when I, when I first voted in the 80s, I, I voted Labour. Now, I don't think I understood the issues, but I did love the guitar sound on Billy Bragg's first album. The building is technically, structurally not safe. That's 
why everybody's got through that last drive. Yeah, yeah. I'm beyond pissed living like this. Yeah. Some flaws may be beyond the artist's ability to correct, but instead of pretending they do not exist, the artist can strive to find a purpose for them that contributes to the work as a whole. In a similar vein, with an awareness of our own flaws like an artist, we can attempt to overcome them, or when this is not possible, accept them and see them as an expression of our uniqueness. Well then, Peter, I'm afraid I must ask you to come with me to the restraining bar. Now, if you'd just like to put your hands on the detention knob. Um, but I haven't done anything. Not the gold member cuffs for but you. I'm afraid we'll have to use the bronze mask. No, no, absolutely. No, Peter, no, Peter, no, refuse, Peter. No. What? I'd go further and say, we can't do less. We still feel ourselves patriots. We have promised to respect each other. All of us. That's one of the reasons that makes our world worth fighting for. But you're all together in this small country with the same surroundings, the same amount of pay to spend, and the same sort of places to spend it. And we're all here as soldiers. Everything we do, we do as American soldiers. Not Negroes and white men, rich or poor, but as American soldiers. It's not a bad time, is it, to learn to respect each other both ways. So much so that by the end of this century, they will number 4.5 billion people of which an estimated 500 million are being planned for transferal onto European soil. The individual people are sometimes above and sometimes below the line that, that researchers from outside might come in and call poverty. Some peerages are granted for the lifetime of the person who receives them. It was customary for prime ministers to be granted a lifetime peerage upon leaving office, but this has fallen out of fashion. The last PM to get the honor was Baroness Margaret Thatcher in 1990. And then there's an expectation placed upon them that they can't fulfill. And instead of helping people meet their basic needs, we're busy asking them to feel self-actualized. Well, there's a whole gap, a raft of things in between that the community is missing. You know, been, this is not my first time I've been on one of these shows. And, and, and whilst I'm not disrespecting that, I do believe it's a time for us as a community to remember some of our former resilience and kind of look to ourselves for some of the solutions because it's not their kids that's dying, it's ours. Because it's all right having stop and search, it really is. If that's the tool of, 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 and of measurement and choice. But what about the people that carry that out? If they are carrying that out, that process out, with bias, with something, I mean, we've got officers here policing in, in London who've never lived in an urban area and never come across such diversity in their lives. All these billionaire cycles putting their taxis into the Cayman Islands to tell you that as if the money's irretrievable. Fucking invade the Cayman Islands. <laughs> More by individual decision than by command, they decide to return to their firm base at the beaches. Get it back? What the fuck are the Cayman Islands going to do about it? <laughs> While these incidents are taking place, the troop commander is still trying to direct the action, in spite of feeling nauseated. I'm trying to tell the people of Britain that they don't have to be big to be great. Well, um, they uh, have the resources to run in election campaigns. But you're right in saying that people have begun to ask, well, when did we sign this agreement? When was the treaty? When did Parliament vote to have all this? And found, of course, that there was never any such decision uh, democratically validated. And that's not going to go away as an issue in Britain, no matter who is prime minister. When Pakistani families visit each other, the husband opens the front door to ensure that his wife may not encounter a stranger. Uh, you didn't have a chance to vote for them being there, and nor did we, um, from British soil. And it would also involve giving up the pretense that Britain could independently... The military were called in to seek their mountain hideouts. In search of easy plunder, the hers swooped down on the Lahore mail train. A Muslim is bound by the laws of the religion to pray five times a day. If a man comes to the mosque and by chance he has to go to toilet before he uh, goes in to pray, he can't pray in that suit. Their prayer is not uh, accepted if they're not uh, clean. But we can pray anywhere providing we are clean and we take our shoes off and we've got our rug which is only used for praying, you see. And uh, of course, they, as you know, they perform their prayers and they go down to God's feet. They touch the floor. That, that uh, a lot of English people think when they're going to the floor that they are, they're kissing the ground, but they are not. They are going down to God's feet. All praise is due to Allah, 
The Lord of the world, the God of the world. Mrs. Tazlimali shares with her husband and son the social and religious duties of the mosque. Me and my husband are the Muslim undertakers and he's also classed as a minister because he visits the hospitals, mental homes, uh, prisons and uh, he does the remand homes and uh, visits the sick and of course I say he does the burials. We have a special way of washing and shrouding the dead bodies. I help him. I have to do the females and he does the males. Of course we have to have somebody else with us. Which is a pretense we currently and at great cost maintain. I thought that the connection made by the questioner between the Libya raid and the bases was, was a, a good one. Um, and I just, I'll just say this about it. It's not usually discussed by the government how many there are. And weren't aware that the United States could launch a strike on another country using British territory, uh, with Parliament and the press being unaware of it. And since the, that realization has deepened, if, if you will, and extended, um, people have begun to ask, well, when did we sign this agreement? When was the treaty? When did Parliament vote to have all this? Obviously, they are finding their own accommodation somewhere, probably causing overcrowding, but this is entirely up to them. We have nothing at all that we can offer to them. There's too many people coming to Leicester. I mean, we're having them come all the time, every day. And I think it's causing a bit of ill feeling. Not until... You don't like them? No. Why is that? Don't seem to get on with them. Have enough of the coloured ones as it is. It is astonishing. Instead of getting after disabled people and fucking single parents, that takes balls. Don't it? That takes balls. George Osborne, Ian Duncan Smith. Long before the imperialists came along, right at the end of the 19th century, and told the British, you know, you're great because you've got a great empire, it was a very late development. It was almost a decadent development. It was all crammed into that last 10 or 15 years before World War I. But the time and the ideas that are most difficult to escape from are those of a world that you were born into. And being born just before World War I, World War I it was all these ideas, the ideas of imperialism, uh, which were the air that one breathed uh, as a child and a young man. The British Navy, supported by the French troops, retaliated by seizing Beijing and looting and burning down the Imperial Summer Palace. China was forced to legalize the import of opium. A YouGov poll in 2014 found that 59% of respondents thought the British Empire was something to be proud of, and only 19% were ashamed of its misdeeds. Trains, cricket, empire. Uh, but there was from the very beginning the conviction that this extraordinary connection, unique in the history of a world, mm. uh, mysterious, was bound to be broken, was bound to disappear. But how it would be broken, neither the Indians nor the British could see. And the Indians had just the same sense mm. of this belonging from the other end uh, as we had. But aren't there many um, occasions in which it is possible to impose the sense of belonging and to elicit the sense of consent, and to elicit consent from people who in fact are dominated by all sorts of very subtle methods, which don't in fact necessarily consist of the knout and, mm. uh, no. and the rack. Um, and it's possible to elicit even, in fact, uh, opinions of love. Yes, I'm sure that's so. And I believe that uh, until the last generation, until the 20s and 30s, uh, this was very much the case, that it was through Britain that many Indians uh, gained access to Europe and to the outer world, uh, an experience which they afterwards interpreted and reinterpreted in their own way. So that uh, both sides were, were often mistaken uh, and unconsciously uh, were playing a different part from that which they thought they were. You have rulings that tells you that if she decides to marry, after a divorce, she will lose the custody of her children. How many painters and how many people have painted such beautiful things, but they haven't been rewarded in any way. Yeah. They've died and their paintings have come back, come back to earth after they've died, but it doesn't mean that during their life they've been rewarded. I think I don't do anything with the sense of being rewarded in a way. Yeah. Do you, Abby? There's a, um, what? 
there are certain areas which are wholly Asian and some would be wholly white areas. So if you have a child who goes to a school which is wholly Asian, who lives in an area which is predominantly Asian, where would that child meet children and people of other faiths? They're restricted, aren't they? So you have a child who goes to school from 9 o'clock till about 4 o'clock, then he will go to a mosque maybe, and then Monday to Friday he is within that area. You have weekends. Where is that child meeting? And I'm talking not just about Asian, but I'm also talking about a white child. Where do they actually meet? Uh, I had one. <clears throat> I always thought that Americans were insincere since they were too voluble, too friendly. I thought this too, uh, coming out too much and being too friendly is always a uh, sign of being shallow. Uh, I think this is a feeling which most Asians, with their, uh, with their, they are rather a silent people as a race, and they always think that expressions of uh, too much friendship is always likely to be regarded with suspicion. I'm glad to say, however, that since I've come here, I found that the American is genuinely sincere. But besides the physical and social separation, or perhaps because of it, there's also a clear cultural gap between a significant section of Britain's Muslims and the wider population. Equality of women, social tolerance, freedom of expression are now all taken for granted as features of the British way of life. Happy Pride, everybody! Um, the direction in which a nation is going is the right one. Um, if two different, even contradictory opinions or points of views can be hospitable, can be exist in hospitality in the United States, can have uh, hospitality in the United States, this is progress. It may not be, it is not weakness. The dynamism of a democracy that gives hospitality to yes. two points of view. Now you, are, you think that if the society of the white and the society of the blacks is mixed, it will be quite dangerous for you because these people are not as civilized as the white. Exactly. Suppose these people are kept in separation and uh, you educate them and uh, the government, I hope, I think believes within the 20 years they will be uh, of the same standard as the white. Mm -hmm. And uh, this means that you are giving them help mechanically and unless you mix with them, if they are as good as you, then they will say, get away, who cares for you? Because logically enough and generally speaking, land holding and the vote went hand in hand. The idea being in the colonies that you should only let people vote who were really invested in a community. And landholders are pretty literally invested in their communities. So in the colonies where you have a, lot, a, a much larger number of landholders, you have a much wider franchise than in England. So an example of that. In the 1760s in England, roughly 20% of white men had the vote. In the colonies, Roughly 60 to 80 percent of white men had the vote, depending on the colony, which is a pretty big difference. How can they know their problems and their ideas? These people are Africans. You believe in separateness. The Africans separate and the whites separate. Well, how then can it happen that uh, you get whites representing Africans and ideas think that since is, they are separate? I don't think that is fair either. Since the uh, people in the House of Representatives, do you call it that? That's right. Uh -huh, uh, they, they are supported by the taxes paid by the natives, aren't they? No, just a minute. There, you've gone all together wrong. And that one fact alone represents a big shift in mindset. Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, Normans, Flemings, Huguenots, Indians, Kenyans, Russians, and in more recent times, Americans, Australians, and soon-to-be Hong Kong Chinese. Let's face it, at some point in the last 12,000 years, Every one of our ancestors was an immigrant to these islands. Back in 1337, when King Edward III added dukes to the peerage, Parliament also split into two houses. The House of Lords, made up of nobles, and the House of Commons, made up of representatives from each borough, or subdivision of a county. Europeans went all over the world. Europeans took over continents. All right? Do you remember that? Australia, New Zealand, South America. In Libya, America. you've got, come to Syria, to Iraq, to Afghanistan, to Somalia. I mean, from China all the way to Spain. To save us all and our children. Once again, now, today, I must tell you that in spite of all our victories, a rough road lies ahead. The sort of Britain that we want 
is uh, in Britain where, where the Sharia is implemented. How is it that we can now deny just safety? So there is a serious political problem. If you want to change something, you have to be a part of something. You have to get involved, you have to educate yourself on it, and you have to make a change from inside. It's all good and well having an opinion saying no one listens, but if you're not there to be listened to, who's going to listen? During the war, I rested my trust in the British people.